Hello, hello, boys and girls. Sadie says hi. Say hi. Hi. Oh, there's someone outside. Oh, there's somebody outside. She's going to start barking in just a second. You say hi. Er. Today we are learning about measurement. Measurement. You excited? She's more excited about the person who's coming home. <laughs> oh, there she goes. All right, boys and girls, today we're going to be learning uh, some more about measurement. And we're going to be looking specifically today at length and time and money and the most important thing you're going to have and use today is your reference material sheet which is has all the conversions on there for you so let's go ahead and get started all right so i am really excited about something I'm really excited. You know you're a teacher when you get super excited about <laughs> dry erase markers. I got some brand new dry erase markers and I am super, super excited. The ones I had were starting to get really dry and not work very well. I can't go back up to the school and get all my ones there, so I'm excited. So I'm gonna be opening these up and using them for the first time today. Oh, you know what? I did mean to show you this. All right, so on your Slides. Right now it's slide six, so hopefully it'll stay that way. This is something you're going to be needing to use all during the week. Um, last week when we did some of the problems, we worked them together, they had the conversion chart kind of right there for you um, on the worksheet that we were doing, the thinking of worksheets, but this week they do not. So you're going to need to constantly go back and refer to this reference materials guide um, when you do the problems. Even when I was doing them just a little while ago to check my answers, I don't have them all memorized and I was going back and I was looking so make sure that that you go back and look okay all right so one of the things I just want to kind of mention is your DNP okay so really quickly DNP I know it is not something that is required but I had something that happened to me today and it made me really sad um, I was working with a student on a Google Meets and we went to go do something super easy it was like 16 times 25 and that student who normally is a really good student could not do that multiplication for me could not remember the steps I had to walk them through the turtle and couldn't remember to mark out and put the egg and where to add and where to multiply and it it made me sad because that is something that I feel like you guys really really did well before we left but it's not something that we do every single day in the lessons that we're doing here on our Google Classroom, which is why I've been encouraging you guys to continue working on your DMP. Um, your DMP is gonna help you not only with the work that you're doing now, um, but also when you get into fifth grade. When you get into fifth grade and you get to the point where you're doing something that we did um, for fourth grade and it wasn't something that we covered in our Google Classroom, your fifth grade teacher is gonna be so impressed if you are the student who remembers how to do the long division and the long multiplication and adding and subtracting of fractions and decimals and all those things we're not working on this week because we're working on measurement, but just keeping those skills sharp is so, so important, okay? All right, so this should be where you are and then here is the, oh, I just tried to touch it and that's not gonna work. So here is the page that we're gonna be doing today, thinking up, page 351, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and so grab my screen it turns that way, it makes things a lot easier. Okay, so we're just gonna get started right away. Okay, DMP right here. All right, so um, there we go, 351. Remember that one of the best things that you can do also this week is print off these pages. Print them off so that you can work them out with me. Um, and that you can pause the video and you can do the work on your own and then go back and check, okay? All right, here we go, number one. Rex, he purchased two kilograms of beef, four kilograms of chicken, and three kilograms of ribs for a barbecue. That sounds good. It is actually almost six o'clock on Wednesday evening and I have not eaten dinner yet and I was talking, are we gonna do barbecue? Now that I read this, baby, that sounds really good. <laughs> um, we were talking about actually getting ribs. All right, so. Having a barbecue, how many grams of meat did Rex purchase? Okay, so beef is meat, chicken is meat, and ribs are meat. So first of all, that's all meat. So there's no confusion there. But it's asking us how many grams they purchased. But yet it gave us everything in 
kilograms, okay? And if you look at your conversion chart, and I'll go back and show you, looking at your conversion chart, okay, grams and kilograms. Does anyone remember how many kilograms or how many grams are in a kilogram? This is the metric system, so remember they work off the tens, the hundreds, and the thousands. But if you look at your conversion chart, all right, right down here, one kilogram is a thousand grams. One kilogram is a thousand grams. So one kilogram, a thousand. Two kilograms, two thousand. Three kilograms, three thousand. So on and so forth, okay? So we've got to figure out how many kilograms we have here, okay? All right, so if there's two kilograms of beef, four of chicken, and three of ribs, that's seven, eight, that is nine kilograms, okay? Nine kilograms. Now notice that one of the answer choices is nine and a half, which is not what we got here, but close to what we got. So that is an answer choice because students could get to the nine kilograms and think, oh, nine and a half is close and just choose that answer. But we have to convert these kilograms to grams. And if we have one kilogram equals a thousand grams. So two kilograms we equal 2,000 grams, three kilograms we equal three kilograms, so on and so forth. So that would be 9,000 grams, 9,000 grams. All right, let's look at number two, getting up and getting ready for school in the morning. All right, Haley gets up at 6.25 a.m. I seriously doubt there is anyone listening to this video that has to get up at 6 something in the morning anymore. <laughs> she leaves her house at 7.19 to catch the bus for school. How many minutes does Haley have to get ready before she leaves for school? I actually think this one is not really all that hard. Do me a favor and pause your video and see how much time, if she gets up at 625 and leaves at 719, figure out how many minutes, because notice we, we have minutes, how many minutes does she have to get ready in the morning and pause that video now, please. All right, let's see. So if she gets up at 625, this is, this is kind of how I think of it. I think of it as 6.25 to 7 o'clock, because that's the next major hour, okay, is 35 minutes. And then I think, okay, 7 to 7.19 is 19 minutes. And then when I add 35 and 19, 9 plus 5 is 14. Carry my 1, 3, 4, 5, 54 minutes. That is my answer. That one was not too hard. All right, here we go. Let's look at the next one. Going to a supermarket, getting a pound of grapes. It cost a dollar eighty. A pound of grapes cost a dollar eighty. Okay, so one. Now this is really weird. <laughs> the abbreviation for pound is actually LB. <laughs> so one pound equals. A dollar eighty it costs a dollar eighty for a pound of grapes. <clears throat> that's actually pretty cheap. Grapes are usually expensive. Adriana, that's not Adriana. Ariana purchased two pounds of grapes. Okay, so one pound is a dollar eighty. So two pounds, you just got to do a dollar eighty plus a dollar eighty to figure out how much. Zero plus zero is zero. Eight and eight is sixteen. Carry my one. So $3.60 is what she is going to spend on two pounds of grapes. Now, notice that answer choice is there, okay? But that is not what they're asking. They didn't ask us how much money did she spend. They're asking us if she gives the clerk $10, how much change will she get? If she gives the clerk $10, how much change will she get, okay? And this is what I'm talking about with my DMP. All right, we have to take $10 and we have to subtract $3.60, okay? Now, this is one of those problems with lots of zeros. This is one of those problems that would normally be on our DMP so that we can practice what it looks like to subtract with zeros. Okay, let's see. Why don't you pause the video, do your subtraction, and see how you do. Pause now. Now, did you really pause it? You didn't pause it please pause it 
All right, here we go. Zero minus zero is zero. We cannot do zero minus six, can't borrow from the zero, so we'll have to borrow from that one. Normally it would just make that a 10, and then we'd have to take the zero and borrow from the 10 and make it a nine. So here we go. 10 minus six is four. There's our decimal. Nine minus three is six. Six dollars and 40 cents. That is how much change she will receive. All right, here we go. Number four. This is a tough one. This one, I'll tell you right now, I fell for the trick. I fell for the trick. I chose the wrong answer. When I went back and checked, I was like, oh, what did I do? Here we go. Sally has a spool that holds five meters of ribbon. Okay, so a spool is like this round thing and it's got this ribbon wrapped around it. So she got a spool of ribbon and it had five meters on it, five meters. She uses two meters of the ribbon on a wreath and half a meter on ribbon to wrap a gift. Okay, so what does she use? She uses two meters and then she uses half a meter. Sally also cuts off 25 centimeters to use as a bookmark. So she also uses 25 centimeters and 78 centimeters to use as a hair ribbon. Okay, so this is what she uses. She starts with five meters. She uses two meters on something, a half a meter on something, 25 centimeters on something, and 78 centimeters on something. How many centimeters of ribbon are left on the spool? So five meters to begin with, and then she uses all this, what is left over? Okay, so we have to do a couple of things. We've gotta figure out how much she uses, and we have to subtract it from how much she started off with, okay? But before we can figure out how much she uses, okay, and everything's in centimeters, we've gotta convert these two meters to centimeters before we can do that, okay? All right, so two meters. One meter, according to our conversion, okay? One meter equals 100 centimeters. One meter is 100 centimeters, and she used two meters, so that is 200 centimeters. So I can mark out that two meters and replace it with 200 centimeters, okay? And then half a meter, well, let's see. If one meter is 100 centimeters, then half of a meter would be 50. Yep, yeah, 50. 50 centimeters. All right, so I can mark that off. So now this is everything in centimeters, all right? So again, DMP, practicing that addition, all right? Stop and pause for just a second. Add those together and see what you get. All right, let's see. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So my three, carry my one, seven, eight, nine, seven, eight, nine, 10, and that's 15. One, 353 centimeters is what she used. Notice that is a choice. Ms. Turney stopped right there, <laughs> circled my answer and went on. So that is what she used, but that is not the question that it asked. How many were left on the spool if she started off with five meters, okay? So, five meters, if one meter is 100, two is 200, so five meters is 500 centimeters. Now I have to subtract 353. Pause the video for just a second, see what you get. All right, can't do zero minus three, can't do zero minus five, borrow from the five, make it a four, that's a nine and that is a 10. 10 minus three is seven. Nine minus five is four. Four minus one is three. That is how many was left over. Ooh, there were a lot of steps in that one. Lots of steps in that one. 
All right, here we go. Let's take a look at number five. Let's take a look at number five. Jacqueline planned a girl's sleepover. She purchased two two-liter bottles of soda and six bottles of water that each held half a liter. Her mother made two liters of fruit punch. How many milliliters of drinks did Jacqueline have for her party? It gives us everything in liters, but then asks us how many milliliters she had. So let's start off by figuring out how many liters she has, okay? First of, first of all, she purchased two two liters, okay? So she has a two liter and a two liter. Then six bottles of water that each held half of a liter. Okay, so think of it this way. It's not six liters because each one isn't holding a liter, each one is holding half a liters. So that would be how many liters? Three liters, there you go. And then her mother made two liters of fruit punch. Not two two liters like the soda, just two liters. So if I add that together, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine liters, okay? That is how many liters that I have. But it's not asking me about liters, it's asking me about milliliters. So if I look on my conversion, okay, I can see that one liter is a thousand milliliters. One liter is a thousand milliliters. So that's like one liter is like 1,000 small drops, okay? So if one is a thousand and two is 2,000 and three is 3,000 and so on and so forth, then you would have how many milliliters? 9,000 milliliters. All right, and here we go. Last one for today. Janelle has a piece of fabric that measures two yards and eight inches in length. Two yards and eight inches, okay? Let's see. She cuts the fabric into four equal pieces. What is the length in inches of each piece of fabric? Okay. So I did the same thing with number six as I did with number four. There, this is a definitely to two to three step problem and I got to a certain step, saw my answer, circled it, and then went and checked and went, oops, what did I do wrong? All right, so two yards and eight inches. First of all, let's notice that everything is in inches. So we've got to get this two yards and eight inches into all inches, okay? So the eight inches obviously is already in inches, so we've got to convert two yards into inches, okay? So two yards equals how many inches? Right, if we look here at our conversions, one yard equals, okay, we don't have yards to inches right here on our conversions. We have feet to inches and yards to feet. So before we can put those yards into inches, we have to put the yards into feet. Okay, so one yard is three feet. So if one yard is three feet, then two yards would have to be six feet. All right, now we can put the feet into inches. All right, you should know this, but I'll show you anyways. One foot is 12 inches. All right. So if one foot is 12 inches, and two feet would be 24, and three feet would be 36, I'm just multiplying by 12. And six times 12 is 72 inches, okay? So we just took the two yards and we converted it into 72 inches. Now, notice that's there. I didn't stop there. I did know to keep going. We now have to add in that eight inches and now we have 80 inches. That's where I stopped. I saw that that was there, 80, and I thought I was done. However, it says, what is the length in inches of each piece of fabric? So remember, she had this big piece of fabric and she cut it into four equal pieces. So if I have a piece of fabric that is like that, 
and it is 80 inches, but I wanna cut it into four equal pieces like that, how much would each one of those be? I have to take 80, and what operation am I gonna to need to do? I'm gonna to need to divide, okay? 80 divided by four equals 20. Each one of those would be 20, and that is your answer. All right, so I did say that I was gonna have a little hidden thing in all of my videos this week. So what I would like for you to do, um, if you are still watching this video and you went all the way through everything like you were supposed to, I would like for you to take and put a little red smiley face next to number six, please. A red smiley face next to number six, please. All right, that's it. Have a great rest of your Guess what? I didn't even use... I didn't even use my brand new Expo markers. Maybe I'll get them out and use them just to. All right, let's do the red smiley face, considering that's the one that I just told you to do. <sighs> These are my favorite new ones. Red smiley. Put a red smiley face next to number six, if you watch this video from beginning to end. All right, that is all, boys and girls. I will see you tomorrow.